Welcome to the Intentional Life Podcast. My name is Courtney Asher. And I'm Ben Cornick. And we're here from Christ the Rock Community Church in Menasha, Wisconsin. The Intentional Life Podcast is all about making disciples of Jesus, who make disciples of Jesus, and continuing to grow as his followers. Today on our first episode, we are going to talk about the purpose of the church. That's right. So we have a big mission at our church, Christ the Rock, of making disciples of Jesus. And mm-hmm. we just want to ask the question before we assume that everybody's going to agree to that mission, yeah. that that's the right mission. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're asking the question today, what is the purpose of the church? If the church is indeed meant to make disciples of Jesus, I think we're on track. Mm-hmm. If the church is meant to do all these other things, auxiliary things, what does that look like? How do we do those things and keep the mission central to what we're doing? Yep. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about what the church has looked like in the past and maybe what we're going towards um, with trying to be intentional mm-hmm. in our lives as Christ followers. Absolutely. So, uh, Ben, would you just share with us a little bit about what the church has looked like throughout history? Sure. Uh, what's really interesting is that um, this is a huge question. Like, what's the purpose of the church? Yeah. And so I think, obviously, that's a question the church continues to ask throughout history. Mm. So and I think it kind of goes in ebbs and flow. Like, there, there's moments where I think the church just kind of loses focus, and mm. it becomes about all sorts of stuff. And then there's these moments in history where everyone goes, wait, what is the actual mission? Like, what are mm. we supposed to be doing? What is our purpose right. here? And, um, and, you know, you can look back through, like, the Reformation period and people really were like, hey, we've got to figure out what the Word of God says. And that led to a lot of communities that really looked like the Acts 2 church. Hmm. So it seems like in most of these times throughout history, whenever the church says, hey, uh, what is the purpose of the church? They wind up looking like the Acts 2 church. And, right. uh, and you know, and if you're not familiar with what we mean by the Acts 2 church, uh, there's the book of Acts in the Bible, uh, comes after the Gospels, and in chapter 2, there's this moment where it says after the church was birthed into the world, uh, there is this season where they were meeting together every day, they were praying mm. together, they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, um, they were... Uh, you know, taking care of one another's needs. They were breaking yep. bread together. Yep. They were finding healing together. Like it was, it was wild, and people were being added to their number every day. Hmm. But um, th- that, so I think a lot of times we go, yeah, that's what we want to be. We want to be that kind of church. Yeah. But then I think the difficulty is like we're trying to go after the fruit of something without understanding the root of it. Sure. Yeah. And so hmm. it's like, what was the root of it? Like, what did Jesus tell them to focus on? that caused that uh, sort of activity to happen. Hmm. And so I think great. I think that's a real question we have to wrestle with because sometimes we can say, let's make, we got to really figure out community as a church or we've got to yep. really be good about teaching or worship or whatever. But it's like, well, is that something that we can just manufacture and do? Or is right. it something that comes as an outgrowth of something else that Jesus told us to do? That's and I great. think that's a question we have to wrestle with. Yeah. And those things you mentioned are great, right? Mm-hmm. Like the teaching, um, even just you think about children's mm-hmm. ministry or Sunday morning kids mm-hmm. church. You think about missions, opportunities, and outreach. Um, even some of the classes or programs we put on at the church, like great quality material, um, things that really help people grow. Mm-hmm. But if you think about the church recently, I think sometimes it's been like throwing a bunch of things at the wall and hoping something will stick, right? Mm-hmm. We're running a ton of classes, a ton of programs programs. We're trying to have a really awesome Sunday morning service. Missions, you know, we're trying to be intentional in the community, but probably not as much as we should be, right? And somehow there's a disconnect. We're just kind of throwing everything at the wall, and I don't think everybody knows what is the goal that we're going for here, Hmm. and how are all the things we're doing contributing to accomplishing that? So I think you're right to go back and go, okay, if we want Acts 2 Church, what was the formation or the foundation of what they were called to that caused them to live a life like that. And then how do we do that in our context today? Mm -hmm. Because certainly culturally things are a little different. Um, I think about the Acts 2 church saying, hey, they had all things in common. They shared things Mm -hmm. and had all things in common. And I'm going, well, is the church today going to really be comfortable sharing all things with Mm -hmm. one another? Um, I think that's a good challenge for us. Yeah. So, so what was the foundation then, Ben, that you think of, you know, the Acts 2 church that we're, we should be shooting for? Well, um, I think that what we have to go to is what Jesus said right before he left the earth. 
Um, so it's this powerful moment, and, and it's actually recorded in a few places in the scriptures, but sort of the main places you're going to see it is Acts chapter 1 and Matthew 28. Okay. In Acts 1, he tells them, hey, to really do the mission of the church, you need the Holy Spirit. Like, he, he makes that mm. really clear in Acts chapter 1. But in Matthew 28, in that same moment, he's actually describing to them, like, the actual components to the mission that he's giving the church. And yeah. so it's in mm. Matthew uh, 28, uh, verses 18 through 20. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So he's, he's helping them to know, like, I actually have the authority to give you this mission. Yeah. And what's crazy then is you would think if someone has all authority in heaven and on earth, mm -hmm. whatever they say next is like really <laughs> important, that. right? Yeah, we should do that. So then he says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. <laughs> it's the first thing he says, <laughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So he's with us, but there's these components of this mission. But the main point is therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah. Like that is what hmm. he's getting at. And, you know, in, in, in future episodes, we want to talk about what is disciple and, you know, what what did what did Jesus mean when he was using these words? But I think this is the thing we have to wrestle with is like, yeah. if this is the thing Jesus told us to do, then like, how do, how do we do that? What does it mean to make disciples? Like, and that's, I think that's what we have to wrestle with hmm. in this podcast. Yeah, for sure. And he doesn't say just, you know, make disciples occasionally or make disciples, you know, of one particular area, make yeah. disciples of Judea, right? Or what? I mm -hmm. mean, it's like, hey, of all nations. Yeah. And we know in the future in Revelation, we hear that like every tongue, every tribe, every nation is going to be worshiping God. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to get there mm -hmm. to move from, man, Jesus is leaving and handing off this mission yeah. and actually commanding us to do this, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, it's not really optional. It's like, hey, this is what I'm asking you to do. You want to be my disciple? This is how you do it. You got to yeah. go and and fulfill this this mandate, mm -hmm. right? And, um, he, and he didn't say like, so just start a discipleship department at your church, right? Yeah, you because know, like I feel like that's usually we're like, okay, yeah. well, we've got a discipleship department, or we did a yep. discipleship thing, and you know, and sometimes I feel like, man, it, it could just be that our 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 focus is too narrow hmm. when it comes to discipleship, because I, I think we've put discipleship in a box that we're like, well, it's just like people studying a certain curriculum together or something like that. Sure, like whatever sure. whatever discipleship means for us, like that's I think something we have to wrestle with too because what I remember when I first had to wrestle with this idea, it felt unexciting to me. Hmm. Because I was like, well, discipleship's kind of boring. Like it's just like yeah. when people sit <laughs> yep. in a class and learn something from some yeah. stodgy person who's trying, you know, where I'm like, no, the, the the other stuff is the more exciting stuff. Hmm. And yeah. so I feel like that's part of the wrestle too is because I I do wonder if that's where some of the initial pushback can happen for some people hmm. is that they're going, well, discipleship's not really that exciting. Right. Or like I've heard people say, I don't want to just do discipleship. <laughs> yeah. and you're Feels like, limiting. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, what do we mean? And again, what do we mean by that? Because if mm -hmm. discipleship has become a program in the church that we're just going to try and run people mm -hmm. through this course thinking that by the end, they're going to be mature disciples. And most of the time, we don't even include them making disciples in that process. Mm -hmm. So we go, hey, you're just yeah. going to reach some sort of spiritual parenthood or maturity. Um, and then when you're there, you've arrived and like just ride it out until the end. Yeah. Um, and as long as you keep growing, you're, you're fulfilling the mission. But Christ mm -hmm. is actually handing off this mission and going, what you need to be intentional about doing is making other disciples, yeah. which means that the fullness of the mission was handed to those guys mm -hmm. and means that here we are today because they were successful in handing off the mission from generation to generation. Yeah, that's so, a good point. So, you know, John, I, I just want to point out this passage in John 17 because I love it. He's pr This is Jesus' prayer, um, and he says, you know, Father, the hour has come. This is right before he's going to uh, give his life. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. And here's the authority piece, for you granted him authority over all people that mm -hmm. he might give a, eternal life to those who you have given him. And this is eternal life that you know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. Mm -hmm. And here in verse 4, it's like, so dead on. I've brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Mm. So here's this prayer where he's going like, you know, glorify your son that I might glorify you. And like, I'm ready to go because I have literally brought you glory on earth by finishing, completing the work that you've asked me to do. Yeah. Well, what was the work? 
Mm-hmm. Right? Because this is before he went to the cross. And certainly we know the cross had to happen so that we could have eternal life with him. Yeah. But he's going, man, there was a goodness about the work that I did here that mm-hmm. is completed. And yeah. I'm handing off this mission. These guys are ready to obey all of my commands, the fullness mm-hmm. of my commands, and to hand off that mission to the next generation and their next generation. Yeah. I mean, how powerful is that? Well, it is powerful because if you think about like that idea of it being limiting, like, oh, it's just discipleship. Right. And I'm like, but think about this. Like Jesus, God in human flesh, um, he decided to spend that three years of his ministry. Like, did he preach to the crowds? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he heal people? Yes. Like he did all these things. But what he spent the bulk of his time and energy doing was pouring into these 12 disciples. Right. And Hmm. and. Only 11 of them would continue on, and he knew that. So really, yeah. he knew he was only uh, actually giving a mission to 11 people who were going to carry it forward. Yeah. And if you if you thought about, like, the most important person who's ever walked the face of the earth, uh, he, he rested it all in 11 people. And he, right. in his whole ministry, he yeah. never went further than 40 miles away from his hometown. Yeah, that's wild. And so, like, you would think, oh, he's the son of God. Like, he he should be, like, hitting every continent. He should go to the biggest cities. Yep. He should get the epicenters Public of... Public television. Yeah. Like, why didn't he come now, right? Where it's like, yeah. hey, we just sit in front of a mic and we can air this yeah, to everybody. Yeah, we just do this, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. And, but, but instead, he picked 11 super unlikely people. Hmm. poured himself into them in such a small, really unimportant area of the world, like it, geopolitically, uh, hmm. especially at the time. And yet that is how he hmm. he was going to carry forward the mission through these 11 disciples. Yeah. So that's yeah. crazy to me. I like, know. and the, That's and the work he was doing. What's awesome is, you know, again, like it's the best idea because it was God's idea, right? Yeah. But this strategy... Uh, is not about being a specialized person with like mm-hmm. some sort of advanced skill set or want yeah. some sort of you know unique talent or like you're just the best you know evangelist of all time or you're just the best you know woodworker of all time or whatever and it's like literally bare bones bringing it down to something that everybody can do with the power of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and so everyone in the world like all nations can hear the gospel, can hear the good news, can have a chance to receive Christ and to be a disciple maker Mm -hmm. because it's literally just about, you know, accepting Christ's invitation and following that mission and by his power doing what he's asking us to do. So it's the best strategy to reach all corners of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and the message of the gospel needs a messenger. If we want all nations to come to Christ, like somebody must tell them. So Mm -hmm. you got like that passage in Romans that says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? Mm. Talking about the unbeliever, how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Yeah. So someone's got to tell them. Mm-hmm. But the strategy that Jesus laid out for us and modeled for us was really that investment of these guys in a way that they were going to go out and continue to do that work, and yeah. we get to do that work today too. Yeah. It, it, what's really cool about that is that when you think about um, maybe some of the things that we do focus on as churches in the 21st century, like. Uh, there's sort of the Hillsong model of like a hmm. really big kind of experience around sure. worship. Yep. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Like I, I love really great worship yeah, gatherings. Right? Like that yep. really is exciting to me. But um, that doesn't work in every culture. Hmm. Like not every culture likes contemporary Christian music. Uh, not every culture yeah, can true. even set up a sound system like true. that or whatever. So it breaks down. Like mm-hmm. at a certain point, you can't reproduce that model everywhere. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you think about churches that maybe focus a lot on, um, you know, maybe programmatic things like around like children's ministry sure. or youth ministry, again, not it's not evil, it's not wrong, but in certain cultures, uh, that's just not going to work. Right. It's not So there's a lot of things that I think we in our American church culture, we think, well, this is just the way to do it. Hmm. But what you were just saying was that what Jesus gave us was like making disciples of Jesus is something that actually can exist in any culture, anywhere, yeah. at any time. Right. And I think um, that's why the church has gone from, you know, generation to generation to generation and continues to reach people. And Mm. why we are here today is because there's people who took this mission seriously. And they understood they were the messengers, but they understood that Hmm. the the message uh, wasn't just about giving people information. It was about inviting people into transformation. 
Yeah. And yeah, that transformation really happens through mm. a relationship of discipleship. That's where we learn to be like Jesus, be conformed into his image. Uh, we can, hmm. you know, we can listen to all the stuff and watch all the stuff and read all the stuff we want. But if we're not actually in transformative discipleship relationship, mm -hmm. um, that seems to be the model or the, yeah. the method that Jesus yeah. gave the church. And it's worked for 2,000 years. Right, right. And, and hey, if we're, you know, listening to the words of Jesus and we're following what he's told us to do, mm -hmm. um, why not look at the life of Jesus and use his methods? Exactly. Right, to try and yeah. accomplish this. So <laughs> I think it's a really cool opportunity we have yeah. to go, okay, what did Christ do? And and I think, um, at least I'm convinced, this, this is the purpose of the church. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to recap, our church is really being intentional about living out this intentional life, um, which is making disciples of Jesus who make disciples of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We want to grow as disciples, and we know that a, a disciple is going to reach maturity when they are investing in other disciples and making other disciples of Jesus. Yeah. Um, so we're excited about the intentional life. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in with us on this first episode of What is the Purpose of the Church? Uh, join us next time. We're going to be talking about what is a disciple. So we've agreed that, hey, the purpose of the church is to make disciples. Yeah. But what is a disciple? I mean, we got to break that down and we got to look into mm -hmm. that a little bit so that we feel like we're on the same page and we know what we're shooting for. Um, thanks so much for joining in and we uh, hope to see you next time. See you then.